It's been a while since you and I have talked, around three or four months to be exact. Um, I'm, I'm finally graduated back in Chicago. Uh, as you guys know from all the travel vlogs, that's where I'm from, that's my hometown. And uh, it's funny because with how much I've been inactive on this channel, you guys have seen more of me across the world than where I'm actually from. Uh, but yeah, I'm loving it. I'm really loving my new life in the city. And it's really everything that I um, was looking forward to coming back to. And it's gonna be almost one year since I left to study abroad. I have some friends that are going to Canterbury themselves next semester and they've been like asking me questions and like stuff about like life out there and it's making me miss it a lot. I wanted to make this video sooner but there was just so many things that happened after the trip was done and I guess I just didn't think to record it because I wasn't actually like out doing things but a lot of things in my mind that uh, I've sort of held on to about the trip and what it will do for me for the rest of my life and I wanted to share that with you today so without further ado here is 50 things that I learned while studying abroad. Number one. Studying abroad brings you lots of excitement. Naturally, you'll also be met with a lot of disappointments. For me, the biggest one was my trip being canceled the first time. Number three, you might not think that you'll get homesick, but trust me, you will. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Long distance makes a relationship grow stronger. It is 100% okay to cry. I'd say it's encouraged, because how else are you supposed to process your emotions? It's okay to have a change of heart. You're gonna learn new things about yourself that you'll hold on to for the rest of your life. And the beautiful thing is, you never would have learned these things if you hadn't left in the first place. Number 9. Planning a two-week vacation around Europe is hard. You're gonna find yourself sleeping in the most random places. During my travels, I found myself sleeping in airport terminals, train cars, floors of coach buses, subway trains. Whether you're taking an overnight train to Switzerland or you're waiting 8 hours for your flight to Greece, you don't really have a choice. But that brings me to my next point. When you're traveling alone, do not fall asleep on public transit. You might just wake up by yourself on a train six stops later. Guys, I messed up pretty bad. Um, I'm on my way home from the Heathrow Airport and I have to change at St. Pancras, which was in like 20 stops. So I decided to stop and take a little short nap. And then I wake up alone in this train and I was supposed to get off five stops ago. Oh my God. Number 12 apply for scholarships. Meet with your advisor, see what options are available, and you might just end up cutting your program expenses in half. When you're a student abroad, it is very important to set a weekly budget for yourself. On the flip side, there will be times where money will be completely out of the picture. You won't even pay attention to how much you spend, you're not gonna check your bank account, and you're gonna drop so much money in one week. And that's okay, because it's moments like these where you truly get to be in the moment and take in everything that's around you. And honestly, this part is probably more important than saving money, which brings me to my next point. Money will always come back. If there's gonna be something holding you back from travel, do not let it be the money. Number 16, nine times out of 10, a personalized experience is way better than whatever everyone else is doing. Staying with Claudia's family in Sicily was a hundred times better than going to Rome, a place where every tourist and their mother goes to. But speaking of Italy, Italians will always make sure that you are well fed. I kind of already knew that, but when I was there, I really got to experience that. Number 18, Switzerland is a very expensive country. That's what happens when everything is in the middle of nowhere and you have to rely on trains to get everywhere. Try to complete at least three things off of your bucket list when you're out there. If you're gonna travel to another country, pick somewhere warm, please. Athens, Greece is a place that everyone should experience. Croatia is home to the saddest museum I've ever been to. You can always rely on the kindness of strangers to help you navigate foreign transit. Half of your adventure is trying to even get to where you're going. We've been at Heathrow Airport for probably the past like three-ish hours and we spent the last six hours traveling. The bus back to the hotel that we need to go to is not going to arrive until like 30 more minutes. So uh, we actually made some new friends and we're all going to pull an Uber together because we're not, we're not going to wait for that long. Number 25, do not order the wrong thing when you're at the bar. Something that's considered a normal party drink in America can be highly offensive in the UK. Do some research on what you're about to order, or the bartender might end up wanting to kill you. Number 26, you know how Americans tend to worship British people, how we're just so obsessed with their lifestyle, their accents, and a bunch of other things? Well, apparently that goes the other way around because not all British people hate us. Going to the club with your partner is awesome. 
but going to the club when your partner is 4,000 miles away absolutely sucks. At some point in your trip, you may feel like you just want to go home, and that's okay, but don't do it. When you start to get homesick, do not sit in your room all day doing nothing. It might be hard, but stay active. You won't be able to change the way you feel, but something as simple as taking a walk is way better. Number 30. Appreciation for your life back home is an awesome virtue to have, and it'll set you up with the level of contentment that most people struggle to find. Studying abroad has helped me love my country once again, and there's a lot of things that people take for granted from their life back home. Now that I've been back here for a while, am I back to dealing with America's problems? Yes. Am I back to living in a nation full of systematic oppression, income inequality, the other stuff? Yes. But will I continue to use my voice to lead this nation to better days? Absolutely. Because the reality is, people don't hate America, they just hate the system. And take it from me, someone who's grown up here all my life and spent three months on the other side of the world. And if Americans didn't care about their country, they wouldn't be out here trying to fix it. But they do care. And it is so amazing to see everyone taking part in protests, activism, and standing up for things to make this nation a better place. And while there's still so much work to be done, I could finally say that I'm proud to be an American. Number 33, do not consume hamburgers from Mazda that are over two weeks expired. You might just end up going on a trip to Stonehenge and having to deal with some other type of stones. Studying abroad in your last semester can be tricky, but as long as you do all the right planning and stay on top of everything, it can be done. Studying abroad is not for everyone. Studying abroad will help you appreciate where you came from. Racism is present in all parts of the world. In the final month of your trip, start to prepare for the next chapter of your life that you'll be entering once you come back. You will fall into at least one tourist scam when you're out there. It's just bound to happen. I was aware of everything that was going to be around me, and I was still duped into buying this bracelet. Join a club or society when you're out there. It's a great way to meet new people. Once your trip is done, stay in contact with all the friends you meet. The last two weeks of your trip is either going to be super long or super short. When you finally do return, you're going to start to miss it. For some people, it's right as they land. For other people, it's three months later. And all of these are fine. It's okay if you don't miss it right away. Maybe towards the end of your trip, you knew that it was time to come back home. But once you do return, it'll slowly start to catch up to you. On your first day back home, you'll either feel like you were gone for three months or three days. Even after your big journey comes to a close, you will continue to gain knowledge from past experiences and learn from new ones. You'd be surprised that a lot of things you learn about travel happen after it's done. I could make a whole other video just talking about the things that I've learned since I've come back because I know that I'm going to keep growing from this, and that's the beauty of it all. Sometime in the far future, revisit your host country and take a trip to all the places you used to go to. The best conversations you have will often come from complete strangers. Studying abroad is a once in a lifetime opportunity that will bring you excitement, fear, confusion, passion, and fulfillment. And you might not exactly know what you're getting yourself into. You might not exactly know what you're getting yourself into, but the number one thing you need to know, but the most important thing to know is number 50. You have to live. So there you have it guys, 50 things that I learned when I was studying abroad in the United Kingdom. Uh, like I said, there are so many more things that I could have put on this list and it was kind of hard to whittle it down to just 50, but maybe if some of you are thinking about studying abroad, this video was of help to you. And uh, sorry that I haven't really been uploading since I've gotten back. This is exactly what I said that I did not want to do, but as you know, I was kind of very eager to just come back and return to the city and you know homesickness and everything. So I felt like when I got back here, I was just like, all right, screw the camera, screw video, screw everything. This is my time to just finally take it all in. And I feel like maybe that was for the better, that I just didn't have the camera for that. Though, now that I have adjusted to the city, I think I might feel comfortable in starting to make videos again, so stay tuned for that. I know that I have one that's in production right now. Uh, if you did like this video and you want to see all of my study abroad vlogs, that is at the end of this video, and you could check out everything that I went through to bring myself to this moment and sharing advice to you. So, thank you guys again for watching, and I guess I'll see you next time.